Let's talk about a really neat peripheral in the 100 and 200 series of PIC32 MS, MX, the charge time measurement unit. Uh, very useful for capacitive touch. So this peripheral is useful for a lot of different things, but very specifically uh, for measuring capacitance. And what we're going to use it for is uh, we're going to have an electrode, some kind of piece of metal, um, and it, just by hanging out near a surface that is electrically grounded, naturally has some capacitance between it and ground. Uh, we're talking on the uh, very small order here, something like maybe 10 picofarads. Uh, what happens when you add um, charge to this capacitor? Well, the voltage will increase. So the voltage on that capacitor is going to be the integral of the current um, over time uh, divided by that capacitance. So what the PIC has the capability of doing using this CTMU unit is um, inserting some current at a constant rate regardless of the voltage. And so what will happen is that voltage will increase linearly with time as we increase as we put that current in. Now if you come along with your big finger and you touch that surface you change the capacitance. You are essentially another capacitor to ground. And by putting yourself uh, in parallel with that capacitor, you've increased the capacitance of the system. So the rate at which that will charge will decrease because of the overall increased capacitance. Or if we use a constant amount of time, the voltage that it will get to will be smaller. So we will measure the capacitance by charging it a constant current for a known amount of time. So let me show you a short demo of what that looks like. Um, we'll come back and we'll talk about what the funny shape is here for these electrodes. Um, but we can see two numbers on my LCD screen. Uh, both uh, around 9,000, and if I were to touch one side of um, this aluminum trace, the number decreases, and if I touch the other side, it decreases. And so both are decreasing to about uh, maybe 6,000. And then I have an if statement here that when I touch one side, I turn on one uh, WS2812B, and I can touch the other side to turn the other one on. So the CTMU is a very neat circuit, and it's really an add-on to the ADC. So the ADC is the analog to digital converter. That's how we take an analog voltage, something that's not just 0 or 3.3 .3 volts, and we turn it into, in this case, a 10-bit integer. So we have numbers from 0 to 1023 every time we read the analog to digital converter. By enabling the CTMU, when we attach the ADC to a specific pin, we can then insert current out, I guess we're, we're outputting current from that uh, ADC pin into our capacitor, which is the system. Um, and then after a short period of time, we stop inserting that current. We read the voltage using that exact same pin. Um, and then we can try to tell, depending on what number we get back, is it being touched or not? So this is a pretty easy circuit. We really have an AN pin and we're going to connect it to some kind of uh, conductive surface. It could be a wire, it could be a piece of aluminum foil, it could be a banana. Anything that is conductive uh, can be used uh, in the circuit. And we'll specifically use an alligator clip in here. I don't really know how to draw that. Uh, but let's take a look at one of these alligator clips. Um, so these, when you squeeze them, the jaws open and close. The biggest problem usually with them is that the wire is crimp connected inside of the part that has the alligator teeth. So there's no soldered connection in here. And these usually are very inexpensive, like 10 cents each. So before you go using one of these alligators and finding your project doesn't work, uh, test the continuity of the alligator from, from one end to the other end to make sure that the crimp connections are good. 
let's take a brief look at the uh, the pick and see how the analog pins work. So any pin that starts with an AN is an analog capable pin. And there's a lot of them on this pick because there's so few pins. Uh, when we refer to the pin, so um, pin A0 is AN0 and A1 is AN1. Then it starts to get a little weird. Pin B0 is AN2. And there's ANCEL A and ANCEL B bits that make these pins use their analog capabilities. So if you wanted to use uh, AN5, pin B3, has the analog input pin that's going to connect to one of these traces and be the capacitive touch pin. Um, we'll refer to it as pin 5, even though it's B3. Here's the family reference manual chapter on the CTMU. Uh, it's not super long. Uh, it's very interesting because there's lots of other things you could do with the CTMU other than doing capacitive touch. You could actually just straight up measure capacitance. Now, in this case, you would need to calibrate it a lot better because uh, you would you need to like test on a known capacitance. Uh, but doing uh, the kind of capacitive touch sensing we're doing here is just seeing does the relative amount of capacitance change. Uh, for that, we don't really have to um, calibrate it very well in terms of is the capacitance we're reading the actual capacitance. Here's a little block diagram of what's happening on the inside. There's lots of triggers to make this happen. Um, but we can see the main part here is that there's this constant current source and we can force it to output through the ADC. And then uh, we can reverse that and then read the ADC using uh, the ADC peripheral to get the value. So it only takes one pin, but two peripherals uh, to do this, which is pretty neat. Um, here's some code uh, that I've provided. So an ADC.h, which gives us our normal ADC setup and ADC sample convert functions. And then two more, a CTMU setup and a CTMU read. So ADC sample convert is a very manual method. We're going to uh, choose the pin that we're reading. We're going to close the switch that starts sampling. We're going to wait a certain amount of time. We're going to open the switch and then do the conversion and return the number. So this is a very typical uh, manual method of reading the analog to digital converter. The ADC setup, uh, you'd have to use that AND cell to select the pins you're trying to use. Um, the data sheet has uh, some calculations that show what's the minimum amount of time that you need to close that switch to get a good read. In this case, we're going like as fast as possible. For a, a, uh, there's a variety of things we can do to make a less noisy read. And then the CT CTMU setup uh, we get to choose how much current is going to come out of the pin. Uh, the base level is uh, 550 nanoamps, so we're going to turn this on to be 55 um, uh, microamps. Uh, it could go 10 times higher, and it could go 1,000 times lower. Um, so it just kind of depends on how much capacitance have you added to the circuit by clipping a wire to a breadboard to a, you know, a thing. Um, so that's something you could play with this number here to get a different amount of current and then asked for a one millisecond warm-up. Not really sure why. The CTMU read itself uh, is a mixture of ADC and uh, CTMU peripheral calls. So first we're going to have this function, we're going to send it what pin we're trying to read, and a delay function. The longer the delay, uh, the more time we're letting that capacitor charge, so the bigger the number we're getting. We want to make sure that that number doesn't rail and hit 1023, uh, because that's as big as it we can get. But we also want to make sure that number isn't too small because then we don't have great resolution. So we set the ADC uh, to the pin and we turn on sampling. And then we ground the pin to make sure that the voltage is starting at zero and we give it uh, a millisecond here. And this is the big problem with this kind of code is that we have to wait a whole millisecond doing nothing while this pin becomes zero volts. Uh, then we trigger the constant current generator to turn on and it starts pumping current into that capacitor and we're going to wait delay core timer ticks so the longer you wait here the the more time you're giving that current to charge that capacitor then we're going to trigger the uh, ADC to start converting uh, to sample uh, while we're doing that we'll turn off the uh, constant current uh, once we have uh, that sample we'll convert it and we'll return it as a number so this function, you probably want to call several times and average the number of reads. Uh, the AC tends to be a little noisy, so this will be a little bit noisy. So I tend to read it you know, 5 to 15 times 
to get a good number of, uh, like reduce that noise. The last thing we can talk about is uh, what else can you do other than a button that says I'm touching or I'm not touching one of these capacitive touch uh, elements. And the neat thing is a capacitive touch slider. So we can have two buttons, triangular in shape. Um, and you can imagine when you touch along the slider up at the top, basically you're not touching this one, this bottom one at all, and you're only touching this top one. And so you can decide, am I touching this one or not? And I should turn on a light. Same thing with this bottom one, if I'm touching down here, uh, I should turn on another light. And then if you touch it in the middle, you can see that, well, this one's range would be kind of like halfway from here, you're fully touching it and here, you're not touching it all. Same thing with this one. So we can take the output of A and B um, and convert it to kind of like a percentage touched from like here would be maximum touch and here would be minimum touch. And as you slide your finger back and forth, um, we'll uh, dim an LED proportionally. So we'll have three outputs here. Am I touching the top? Am I touching the bottom? And then uh, what is the percent that I'm touching up and down? And that percent up and down, you could potentially do with just one of these electrodes, but it wouldn't be as linear and li nearly as nice as if you had two of them. To do that, you have to do some math, which is described in these paragraphs. Um, basically, you need to know what is the baseline reading from one of these things. So mine was reading around 9,000 when nothing's being touched at all. And I'll subtract off what do I read when I touch it. And then I'll calculate a left position, a right position, and combine them to make a single position where that would output the number zero if you're touching the middle and then uh, positive or more negative as you go up and down as a floating point number. So let's take a look at that in my demo again. This bottom number right now is printing basically gibberish. I'm not touching it, so it's getting really random noise. So I've summed the top two numbers, so that's basically the raw uh, numbers that I got from each electrode. And if that sum is bigger than some value, then I don't consider it touched. And as soon as I touch it, the sum of those uh, starts to go down. So now I know it's being touched. And this white light, try not to block it here, uh, will get brighter and dimmer as I go up and down. And the quality of the construction here really limits uh, how nicely this happens. And you can see it doesn't fade linearly or super linearly, but we can get brighter and brighter and brighter as I go down. And if I'm touching all the way at the top, I get that middle green LED. If I'm touching all the way at the bottom, I get the, the top green LED. So this set of electrodes was made by taking some cardboard out of a uh, cereal box, and then uh, I cut some aluminum foil just to have a little gap here. The data sheet says, or that app note says that this middle stripe should be grounded. I found that the ground it didn't really change the noise profile too much. Um, might be more reliable if this was ground. Uh, but use your alligators to definitely clip one of these to one analog pin, one to another pin. First, just read them and see what the baseline numbers you get out are. See if you can distinguish touched from not touched. You want at least a couple thousand uh, ticks or whatever you want to call the units here of change. Uh, and then try to build this slider and make a dimmer.